first of all, I would like to thank to Croatia for um, having me to participate in this uh, seminar. And um, thank you, Dr. Helm. Good to see you again. And uh, I think what you presented uh, make my presentation a bit easier because you have already shared the uh, principles, the theories, and also some of the practices. So I built my presentation based on the uh, experiences since I do not have any uh, educational background related to the communication and um, other behavior, but I do have um, uh, been working with um, a lot of farmers, uh, especially smallholder farmers in particular for rice. And I think in the last maybe 10 or 15 years, I've been also working with the rice, uh, uh, with corn farmers. Um, mainly on the Asian one border, as you might know that the uh, Polame one was realized to be in Indonesia in the uh, uh, mid-2019. Uh, 2019. And then uh, we had a pandemic since uh, 2000. And so, uh, in fact, I do not have uh, more direct uh, collaboration with the corn farmers dealing with the, uh, with the uh, uh, Polame one. But we do have uh, meetings, we do have uh, chatting, in regard with the polami worm with different stakeholders. So I'm gonna share my experience with rice farmers and then I'll try to bring my experience from the rice farmers to what we should be uh, do or what could we do with the corn farmers. So I'm gonna start with two different events uh, that I had in the past uh, regarding with the um, uh, rice farmers. First, which is about 10 years ago, um, at that time, I worked with uh, one group of rice farmers in, in Klaten, Central Java, and it was during the outbreak of the brown panhopper in India. It was the, I think, it was the highest uh, outbreak um, in the last maybe um, uh, two decades. So it's about 230,000 hectares were infested by the brown panhopper. And here we go. Uh, this is one of the pictures that I had that I took uh, from one of the sites in Klaten and in this size, um, uh, the farmer told me that they did not harvest and gain some yield in the last four rice seasons. So one day I received a letter to, from one of the um, uh, leader in the um, village and asking for some assistance from, from our department to deal with the brown plant hopper because there, I mean, uh, the people in his village did not have any yield, and they even sold the motorcycle to buy um, uh, pesticide, and they used the pesticide, but still were not able to control the front barn hopper. So um, just a day or two days after I received a letter, and then I came down and then went to the field, and this is my first meeting with the farmer leaders, with the leaders of the uh, local government at the village, as well as the uh, um, the leader of the uh, society. So it's only a few people that I met and um, uh, I think I deliver, hopefully I deliver a very clear message at the time because this is very, very um, uh, important for me as Dr. Hyam already mentioned that uh, Indonesia has been implementing uh, IPM since uh, 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 1989. And you saw from, um, you also saw from his uh, presentation that insecticide use is still uh, something that we we are concerned and still uh, big uh, uh, usage of um, insecticide or pesticide in general for rice. So um, when we had a, a problem like this, so what I what I said at the beginning of the first meeting is that I do not have the money, okay? so I did not bring any money. What I brought is only one hand, two hands, and two feet. So let's work together and decide together what we need to do to deal with the plant plant offer. So uh, that's the message that I, de I deliver at the beginning of uh, our meeting. And in the back of my mind, I decided to focus on the uh, pesticide reduction because I got the information from them that they sprayed more than 20 times per season, but they still do not have any yield at the end of the uh, season. So this is the... Uh, the data that we had um, from the first season. After we worked together, we observed together, we make the decision together, but in the back of my head or on the top of my head is that I did not want to talk about the IPM 
that's the way we talk about uh, in the Farmer uh, Field School of IBM. But my first um, estimation or my first objective at that time is one is to reduce the pesticide use, and second is to gain the yield because that's what were needed most for the farmers to gain yield. But we also see that the pesticide use is just you know exceeding uh, what is supposed to be as uh, Dr. Hale mentioned uh, in his presentation. And what we had at the time is during the first season is that we, we still use our pesticide application, especially insecticide for four times because the population of broad manufacturing was huge. So migration from rounding field was almost every day. So is it, this is not the local population. We spread because of the migration, because of the population that coming into the field. And this is not only one or two hectares of field, but it's about 80 to 90 hectares of field with one group of farmers containing 25 farmers. So what we, what we achieved during the first season is that we can reduce the pesticide use from over 20 to only four times, and we can yield 75%. It's not completely um, similar to the yield when they have uh, no front plant hopper, but again, this is a big uh, success for the farmers because they did not harvest any yield in the previous four season. So having 75% is a good achievement. So uh, it is very, very important to me, and I, I think it's also for the farmers to have the, uh, what do you call it, the benefit right away when we uh, deliver the program. And after the first season, the, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, that <clears throat> we could reduce the uh, pesticide use and we gain 75% uh, of yield. Representative of the farmers came to our campus and meet with the dean, meet with the rector, and asking for a continuum of the collaborative learning process. And I should emphasize the word collaborative learning process. And because we do not want to teach them, but we work with them and uh, be in the field and make the system together. And what happened in the second season? There is no pesticide application at all because the population of the predator is always uh, higher than the population of the plant plant hopper. So during the first season, when we applied pesticide four, time, four times, we also uh, showed them that when we apply pesticide, we kill the plant plant hopper, but we kill also spider and lady beetles and other other species that are living that were living in the rice ecosystem. And uh, uh, slow, slowly, but uh, surely, and they start recognizing and believing the role of natural oh. enemies. I think that was the reason why there were no application of insecticide in this uh, in this uh, uh, season, which is the second season. And we work with them for five seasons, which is uh, starting from uh, 90 hectares, and then uh, at the light, at the last season we work with uh, 300 uh, hectares of rice farm with. With them. So um, uh, again, this is a. Um, I want to mention to you, but this is a direct uh, um, action reset uh, from our department to the farmers, and we did not bring any specific project, specific program, but we work together and try to identify what were the uh, most needed by the farmers at the time, which is gaining some yield because the experiences not having yield for four seasons. And we added the, um, the, the, the objective is that by um, reducing the pesticide application, as Dr. Hale mentioned, that just try to rationalize uh, in using the pesticide. So this is what happened in, in, in Clarkton about a decade ago. So the second, and the second story is a bit different because this is uh, something that we have the money because there was a, a project funded by the FAO, it's a collaboration between the Ministry of Agriculture of Indonesia with uh, FAO Indonesia. And I was um, involved as an expert uh, in, 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 in designing and also um, uh, assisting the farmers. And we uh, used the word uh, landscape, uh, which is a little bit different from the past IPM implementation in Indonesia. 
Um, this is because of you know the learning process, the experience that we have for many years that the outbreak of the brand plan hopper is usually start from small spot of um, hopper plan like this. And when we re saw this kind of uh, fields, usually the farmer left his field because they knew or he knew that he wouldn't gain any yield and they did nothing. Uh, uh, but we as an entomologist, we know that this population can be the resources for uh, many different fields surrounding as well as in other fields because uh, uh, brown plant hopper can migrate for uh, long distance as well. So uh, again, the, uh, understanding the ecology as Dr. Hare mentioned is very, very important, but the word that we use is try to use a very simple word as, you know, um, which is probably the word that is our surrounding or uh, commonly said by the farmers in the local uh, society. And here you go by the end of the season, because this is uh, the project run for uh, three seasons. It's, it's different from the IPM implementation before, where the project was usually only for one season. But this is, we were very lucky that we had the funding for uh, running the uh, program for three seasons. So it had some, um, um, you know, some um, um, space, some freedom for us uh, to create. But um, again, the, the, the basic, um, principles uh, that we also introduced the board, the farmers is also the best management uh, principles. And uh, similar to what Dr. Heung said, that we also applied the uh, ecological engineering by planting different um, uh, uh, flowering plants surrounding the fields and also using the biological control agents such as the um, well, Bilberia basiana, Metarisium uh, anisophia, and other things that also work well for controlling the brown uh, plant hopper in, in special and outdoor insect pests that attacking the rice. And uh, the approach that we use during the uh, landscape IPM program funded by the uh, FAO, uh, we, we implemented uh, or we used two different uh, approaches. The first one is the social engineering, because as I mentioned earlier, that pest migration is very important and not many farmers understanding about this and and, um, and all the big outbreak always start from the small, but we usually neglected the small um, small uh, damage uh, because of uh, the economic reason that the farmer do not have the money and they also uh, do not have yield at the end of the season. So they, they ignore the, the, uh, the, uh, the attack rice field, which is the sources of the um, uh, migration for the surrounding farmers. So, what we do very um, uh, focus on this is that try to make the understand, uh, make the farmer understand about that. The responsibility of the management of small plot that's infected by the pest is not only the responsibility of the farmers that own their fields, but it has to be the responsibility of all the farmers in the farm because they're supposed to be knowing that this small population will be even bigger at the end of the season and when it's huge population and then they will migrate to their, uh, their fields. So understanding and working together of the farmers in the farm is going to be the key success for um, management of the brown plant or, or rice patch in general. So this is the key point that we introduced and we try to make them understand and practicing and uh, incorporate it into their mind that they need to work together because PES does not recognize the administrative boundaries, does not recognize the uh, border of the uh, ownership. They will go wherever they want to go. And as an entomologist, we know that Management based on field by field is not going to be solving the problem, but probably using a landscape which is much bigger, it can be a it can be a good way and a good good approach because usually it will insect will attach to the and it will be affected by the surrounding environment. Okay, the second one is the ecological engineering. I do not want to spend too much time on this because Dr. Yang already mentioned uh, with a great detail on that. And the third one is. Uh, we still use the farmer field school as the way we did in the, uh, the beginning of the IPM implementation in Indonesia. And 
this is up just a few pictures to show to uh, to you and a few uh, statements that emphasizing some of the messages that I want to deliver. Paramount Film School is still, still in the delivery, and we noticed that it's very, very important to include women in the group for the training. We can see the differences where the group did not have any women, and the group with one or two or even three women in the, in the group. The dynamic is different, and we know that the role of the woman in the family, it could be different from one family to another family, but still, uh, we so we learn the importance of women in the training process. Okay, this picture just to show how important educating the um, the children, you know. And as we know that flowers are good for children, good for us, as good for the aesthetic as well. And at the beginning of the um, uh, the projects, uh, the flowering plants was uh, usually damaged by the by the children because they pick it up, they cut it, and they use it for for playing around because. They still did not know what what the rules and what the function of the flowers in the in the fields. But this is one of the extension agent that you know explained to the student uh, elementary student. And after that, and then they contributed. They planted the uh, flowering plants uh, uh, around the barns, around the creeks, around the uh, uh, the village road. Um, so make it beautiful, and in some places it becomes uh, uh, like a top local tourist area for for some of the people and taking pictures and again um, i think the support of the government as dr uh, uh, here also mentioned is very very important and but also finding the uh, the uh, the village leader which is having um, uh, the same or sharing the similar platform as we have i think is very very important we were very lucky that one of the uh, projects that we had we had a, a young, you know, um, village leader. He was very eager to learn. He was very uh, futuristic in terms of, you know, how to make the uh, uh, farmer sleep better, uh, because most of their uh, uh, citizens are uh, relying on uh, on agriculture. So, um, selecting and having and talking, um, you know, uh, setting the platform, uh, sharing the similarity and the uh, the objective. I think that's a good, a good start for the success of the programs. But support from other stakeholders, in this case, um, our university department and faculty and uh, FAO, of course, from the Department of Agriculture, for sure, I think is also um, playing a good role in, in determining the success of the, uh, of the program. So uh, I just mentioned three key points um, that, we, uh, that we learned from those two events. First is Whatever that uh, we want to deliver uh, to the farmers, it can buy and work on the top priority goals to get immediate results. So, as I mentioned, that uh, my immediate results or the, the the objective that I wanted to achieve at the time is pesticide reduction and yield. So, I did not want to talk about the IPM in detail at the beginning because, it's, as you may know, that it's not easy to implement the IPM at the beginning and. The, the farmers were in a desperate situation. So we have to deliver benefit uh, as soon as possible. Second is working with the local leaders. Uh, and the third is hit and run programs will not work for delivering the IPM program. Need continuous effort. I'm, I'm going to move to, um, to Paul Ami Wong right now. This is a profile of the Paul Ami Wong in Indonesia. The infestation uh, first occurred in 2019 with a um, uh, 30, around 32,000 hectares um, in 2019, with uh, 30, 23 out of 24 provinces were uh, attacked by this insect in 19, and uh, it uh, enlarged or uh, spread to 20 out of 34 provinces last year, with a total area invested um, increased to 113,000 uh, hectares. And in many cases, and especially in irrigated areas, most of the rice farmers are also the corn farmers. I think that's the reason why, you know, uh, I just uh, starting from rice because sometimes the people are the same, ecosystem is a bit different, but I think uh, the behavior, the way of thinking is the same because we are dealing or we are working with the same farmers. And 
This is the picture that I took in uh, 29 in, uh, in Lampo. This um, <laughs> white area of corn were heavily damaged by the uh, polar neuron. It had been replanted. The farmer had sprayed three times and the corn still been uh, very heavily damaged. But our uh, laboratory and greenhouse study using the same insecticide that the farmer actually used worked very well. So um, that's the reason why I put the title as a knowledge gap. So the insecticide itself, when it used properly, is going to be working very well for controlling the front panel, uh, the controlling the pole panel. But because the understanding of the ecology, the bioecology of the pole armyworm and how to use the insecticide properly, which is going to be, I think uh, our next speaker will be talking a lot about uh, this, is, is, is still there is a gap. And this is something that needs to be filled uh, uh, in addition to reducing the use of pesticide or the use of biological control agent. But how to use the pesticide properly is something that is also very important subject. And Two what minutes, Andy. Know? I'm sorry? Two minutes, Andy. Okay, sure. Uh, I think I just um, two or three more slides. This is this is the uh, um, something that we, we know from the from the field that we have a uh, different crop plants. We have to measure insect pests attacking the corn and also uh, the population of the pole palm woma of crab. So this is the kind of information that we, we need to gain to be able to uh, deliver and um, uh, uh, have the right program. So this is my last slide. So what do we need actually from the farmers? Um, first, immediate results. So I do not say what it is, but I set the criteria because farmers from one village to another village or from one district to another district may have different, uh, different uh, society, different uh, background, different behavior, different ecosystem. So that, why, but whatever the, uh, the program, whatever the uh, uh, behavior, whatever the ecosystem condition, I think delivering immediate results is going to be good to gain trust from the farmers that this program is going to be working. Second, simple and workable program. And I think Dr. Yang mentioned, using the word of, you know, small and big piece is gonna be much more uh, understandable rather than using the word of parasitoid and uh, and whatever the, the jargon that usually the endomologists use. Okay, the third one is medium term of assistance. So in my experience, uh, one rice growing season or one corn growing season is not gonna be enough to deliver the the full package of IPM. So probably two or uh, three seasons is gonna be much much better. But at the same time, we also need to start fostering uh, self-reliance. So these are the four criteria that I want to share with you uh, based on my experiences. Uh, we do not need to start one by one, but we have to, we, we got to start at the same time, but make sure that the first one is gonna be the one that will deliver results immediately. So thank you very much, um, Alison, and hopefully I did not pass the, uh, the time that you set up. Uh, thank you. No, that, that was great, Andy, and, and thank you very much and lots of good information uh, in your presentation as well. I mean, with really a lot of rich information shared today and still more to come. Uh, some questions for you. Uh, do, do you think this sort of IPM then, how we talk about it at the moment, is just sort of too complex then for... To, to talk with farmers about? I mean, you seem to say that it's really good to just focus on simple messages to start with, or even a simple part of IPM rather than rushing in and talking about integrated pest management as a whole. Is, is that your un, your understanding? Yeah, I, I think so. For example, in, in the case of um, um, a rice farmer in Indonesia, um, um, because to make the decision, we have to do the observation to see what are the population of the past and the natural enemies. And, yeah. uh, and most of the farmers did not do uh, uh, um, observation before making the decision. So this is something that, you know, um, we have to deal with because uh, not all the farmers are 100% working in the field, but they yeah, work in different uh, areas, you know. Uh, so farming is just uh, maybe the second or the third, the third uh, jobs that they have. So spending too much time on observing is something that we need to uh, pay attention on that one. So making uh, a, a simple way, like uh, Dr. Hale mentioned, that 
having a good indicators of the ecosystem that will help the farmers without spending too much time like the way we do research in observing the ecosystem, I think it's going to be a, a great way to uh, to uh, equip with uh, IPM's uh, IPM school because I think that's the most uh, what do you call it? Um, not necessarily complain, but it's a concern from the farmers to do the observation weekly and <laughs> make a lot of effort on that and let's uh, make it more complex. So yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the same thing with when we talk about biological control and then we have to rear the biological control agent and then uh, uh, use it and it's, it's complicated. I think which is this is uh, when we contrast it with the pesticide use, it's just totally different. Pesticide is very easy. So I yeah. think this is the thing that, you know, we need to consider. At the you know, good point. Um, I really liked the, the part at the start, you were talking about sitting down and having a cup of tea with the farmers, which I thought sounded mm -hmm. quite nice, but also really useful, just sort of sitting down and having a discussion with them and that sort of almost co-creation of solutions together with the researchers and, and the farmers. Um, how, you had you said you, it was a five season project that initial project that you started and you you ended up with three hundred hectares I believe mm -hmm. it was was it costly to do I mean it was very successful but is it costly to do such a project or uh, not necessarily because uh, all the material all the inputs were coming from farmers the cost that I I, I had is just you know for buying gasoline to to drive my car from my campus to the uh, to the location and also yeah. buying for my lines, you know, but uh, providing, uh, but we did not provide anything for the farmers, except yeah. for the pesticide when we, when we use mass spraying, you know, I, I, I contacted the company that, um, uh, because we had a previous uh, research showing that the uh, brown plant hopper in Java were resistant to certain group of insecticides, but we also did some uh, research looking some alternative insecticides. So when we had a problem, we already had the data from our research. So that's why we, we, we brought that results to the field. And because the insecticide were relatively new, so we had a support from the, actually from the pesticide industry uh, for, um, for spraying at that time. But other than that, we do not spend any money for buying fertilizer and meeting and so okay. on. We do not do that. And uh, Andy, what, what are some of the ways that farmers in Indonesia, uh, what's the best way to communicate? I mean, you've just given one really good example of actually just meeting with them, talking with them, working with them and understanding like person to person. Uh, does We had some examples from Dr. Hyung, Hyung before of television, um, I think the radio maybe, posters. Do, what, what works well? I, I mean, I've seen quite a few people on Facebook, for example, uh, Indonesian farmers, is there anything that works really well or is it just dependent on each community? Um, yeah, I think uh, the, you think the uh, communication system works very well. I mean, it's, it's good to, to, you know, to, to achieve much bigger um, audiences. But I think talking with a, a farmer personally, especially the right person that we talk with, because yeah. we know that he is the leader in the society. I think that's a it's a, it's, it has a great impact. And okay. I mentioned about uh, the role of the woman in the group is also very, very important because they, she might not be working directly in the field, but she might be the one who manages the economy of the family. Excellent. Okay, well, that's a great place to leave it. Thank you. It's sort of identifying a leader there that can kind of be an influencer in the farming community and making sure you're connecting with women um, from that community as well. Thank you so much, uh, Andy. Um, brilliant presentation. You've got lots of questions there, I see, that you could probably help us out with um, in writing. So feel free to jump on and, and answer some of those. But thank you for joining us. Great presentation again. And uh, we really appreciate having you on board. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.